everyone. I'm Adam Brown, and this is Shell Point Today for Monday, September 8th. Today's show is all about the Shell Point Academy of Lifelong Learning. Gaining knowledge about new things or things that happened long ago provides insight and promotes understanding. Learning is an adventure that is a wide open frontier available to anyone at any age. We are fortunate in this community to have a well-developed continuing education program in place that covers a wide range of interests and disciplines. With no less than 91 offerings this fall, our Shell Point Academy has so much to offer that it's sometimes hard to cover all the things that are going on. But today we're going to try. Today, as the fall semester of the Academy gets underway, Terry Kolath is here with a lot of information for you. She will be previewing not one, not two, but three programs ranging from games to art to history. But first, we want to remind those of you who are single to keep in mind that the singles table is available for you at the Crystal Room during dinner time on Mondays and Wednesdays. Now, it's not the matchmaking table, it's just an opportunity to have some company and conversation as you enjoy your dinner. If you'd like to know more about the singles table, you can call the Crystal at 454-2199. Tomorrow, certified aging in place designer Diane Torisi will join us from the Miramar Design Center with a talk on the upside of downsizing. She will share tips and techniques to help you embrace the joys of living smaller and making the most of every square foot of your living space. Begin the emotional process of decluttering by evaluating your wants versus your needs. Become more organized and manage your living space more effectively. Diane will join us for light refreshments following the presentation, which takes place at 3.15 in the Social Center on the island. Also tomorrow, our favorite history professor, Dr. Adrian Kerr, will be here at Shell Point. Terry Kolath, who has camped out at our studio for the day, is here with her first segment about Thailand with Dr. Kerr. Hello everyone, I'm here with Professor Adrian Kier. We're going to talk about the first course in his lineup for our fall semester. This is the glorious history and culture of Thailand and Phuket. Thank you for joining me, Adrian. Thank you, Terry. It's always a pleasure to come to Shell Point. Oh, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. And we are talking today about your course on Thailand and the history and then Phuket. Correct. What is, why are you talking about Phuket? Well, um, the, maybe I can start off with the history of Thailand first, and it, it's fascinating because we in the West have uh, all sorts of um, links into the history, everything from white elephants. Uh, I'll tell you the story about the name white elephant came about um, and how they were a curse to the people who were given them, hence the expression white elephant. Um, the King of Siam, of course, and the movies of the 50s and 60s, The King and I and Deborah Carr and all these, uh, Yul Brenner, I mean, it's a part of our history. And so we know little snippets of uh, Siam or Thailand, as it's called today, um, but not the whole story. And it has a great and glorious story. It's one of the earliest ancient civilizations in the f- Far East, first of all. First of all, it, um, it fought with the Khmer people in Cambodia. Uh, it was attacked by the um, people in Burma, and it's a major center of civilization, learning, and, of course, Buddhism. And people think uh, of the three Buddhist centers now in the Far East, which would be Burma, Thailand, and Cambodia. That's where Buddhist uh, religion is most heavily followed. And even watching those movies, you know, back in the day with Deborah Carr and Yul Brenner, it seemed so amazing and foreign and totally different. Well, Thailand is one of these interesting countries that avoided being taken over by the colonial powers by diplomatic maneuvering. Mm -hmm. So all the other countries around them were taken over by the English or the the French, but they were able to tiptoe through that colonial minefield and stayed pretty much independent. Um, The the recent history of the last 150 years or so has been rather sad in that um, they've had a series of kings all called Rama I all the way through to Rama VII, and the current longest reigning monarch in the world, I believe he's still alive, is the king of Thailand. Thailand. And his role in stabilizing the country has been outstanding. And he's really under test right now because um, with the 
military takeover, not the first in the last 50 years, but one of many, the military takeover has now thrown out the old prime minister who is connected to a corrupt regime of the past. She was, she is now out of office and the military are in office. And of course, there have been all sorts of worries that the country may degenerate into a civil war. And the combination of the military behaving as best they can mm -hmm. and the calming influence of the old king um, has managed to keep Thailand out of serious trouble for the moment. Interesting. And now Phuket. Phuket. Um, Phuket is an island just off the west coast of Thailand, nearly into Burma. And it's one of those um, wonderful um, tropical uh, islands which people flock to and have done for hundreds of years. That was all the case until 2004, when on Boxing Day, which in America would be the 26th of December, um, there was a major earthquake offshore of Sumatra. And this earthquake spread all the way from to Africa and India and Pakistan through to um, the east and, they, and the most devastating uh, impact in the east of the Sumatra was Phuket. It was right in the line within 45 minutes of this huge earthquake. The third largest earthquake we've ever um, recorded. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, 200,000 people died across the world, and 5,000 people died in Phuket, which is a tragedy. Why Phuket um, has been the focus of this earthquake versus more people died in India and Bangladesh and in Indonesia by far, but of course being a tourist center, there were cameras left, right and center, there were lots of Westerners holidaying there, yeah. and they brought back stories of devastation and also what I, want to, what I want to focus on is um, focus on the story of humanity. There were two teenage children, um, and their mother was tragically killed in the wall of water, which is about 30 foot high, which swept into their hotel. And they had to get back to England. And a local couple um, took them under their wing and drove them to Bangkok, uh, 300 miles away, and put them on a plane on their own to come back to England. And that was 10 years ago. Strangely, when they were on Facebook earlier this year, they made contact with people in uh, Phuket, <coughs> and somebody put them in touch with the couple who had done this great humanitarian act, and they communicated by um, Skype, and interestingly enough, this month they both returned, 10 years older, to thank the two Thai people who had helped them so much, and I've got some photographs to show you of um, um, their meeting only this month. Fabulous. Well, thank you. Good reasons to come and spend an hour and a half, 10 to 11.30, Tuesday the 9th of September with Professor Adrian Kerr for the glorious history and culture of Thailand and Phuket. If you ever get the chance to visit Thailand, you're sure to want to take a camera to capture some of the color and magic. And we have quite a bit of color and magic to capture right here at Shell Point. So this next class Terry has to share with us could be just the thing to help you get ready. Hello, everybody. I'm here with Herb Sklar of Eagles Preserve. We're talking about one of the classes that is coming up in the Fall Academy of Lifelong Learning. For those of you with the digital camera, it's a prep school. Thank you for joining me, Herb. Oh, you're welcome. Happy to be here. Um, prep school, yes. Um, digital photography, well, you can only do digital photography. Film photography now is almost passe. It's, right. it's very difficult to do and get the film process, so digital photography is the way to do it. Now, the interesting thing about these cameras, whether they cost you $20 or $10,000. They're basically all the same, and they work by menus. The problem is that every camera has a different menu. So w the way the class runs is you'll bring your camera, uh -huh. and you'll bring your instruction book, and we will spend the first class trying to get everybody's camera working so they really know how to work it. And then the next two weeks, I'll be showing some slideshows and how to take pictures and how to improve your photo skills. So don't worry about it if you think it's too technical. Nicole, there'll be plenty of people who will be helping me, uh -huh. and so everybody will get a little personal attention, and they'll walk out of there knowing how to use their camera. To me, this is one of the best gifts you give us, and you give us a lot of gifts in the that. world of art, but to think that someone who really doesn't know how to use their digital camera can come in in a non-threatening environment and just comfortably learn how to do it, because it's, there's not that much to it if somebody explains your camera to you, right? Right. 
right? Well, I, I also have a little selfish reason for doing it because these people now start taking pictures. They want to join the photo club. Exactly. So I'm recruiting. <laughs> well, you're recruiting, but that's another wonderful thing that it, it's a good thing to talk about when we're talking about a very beginning prep school camera course is that there really are a lot of opportunities to use your camera in life and at Shell Point. Right. And, and it's a very quick learning process because it's not like the old days where you had to send the way and you wait for the pictures to come down. You take a picture, you see it. Well, I don't like it. Now you try to improve it. So it has a very quick learning to it. Exactly. I remember having to set stops and, you know, do all sorts of right. things to get that picture right. And now it really is pushing a button. You're pushing a button and, and you can see it, what you did right away. And yeah. so you can correct all your mistakes. And we might just say, because this is a good time to say it, that with the new photo studio, in the Island Tunnel, the Photo Club will be offering even more classes in photography once you get past that hurdle of oh, abs oh, absolutely. We'll, we'll take you along, Red, right, yeah. and you become an expert in no time. Well, you're so generous with your love of photography, and I just want to thank you on behalf of your community. Oh, you're thank more than you welcome. So much it's my pleasure, really. Now, you've got an opportunity here you won't want to miss. If you have that digital camera sitting in a box somewhere and you're ignoring it, get that box. Bring it to Digital Camera Prep School for three Tuesday mornings with Herb Sklar. You'll be glad you did. After technical information about digital cameras and all of that history, maybe you'll want to unwind with a good game. If cards and the game of bridge sounds like it might be fun, then Terry has one more item for you today. A preview of the intermediate bridge class with our favorite bridge whiz, Susan Willoughby. Hello everyone, I'm here today with our favorite bridge teacher. Her name is Susan Willoughby. She's been teaching bridge at Shell Point for a number of years. And we're going to talk about this semester's offerings in hopes that you will give bridge a try. Thanks for joining me, Susan. You're welcome. Thanks, Terry. So, um, how complicated is it really? You always hear that bridge and chess are the kinds of games that are really difficult to play. Well, I always kind of equate it a little bit to backgammon, which is anybody can play it, mm. but it is not easy to play it well. Uh -huh. Right. Good so point. you can, anybody can learn to play it. Like in college, we threw cards around and pretended we sure. were playing bridge. Then the whole world opens up to you and you find out there's a lot more to it than you thought initially. Another question I get asked is what level of ability do you need to be in? I know we periodically offer classes for beginners, but we really never get enough people interested in signing up. That doesn't mean we won't try it again. Right. But for this class, intermediate, that would signal to me a little bit of knowledge. Well, yes, it is not for the absolute beginner. Uh, you need to know the basics and with a little bit of understanding of some of the conventions, like the most commonly used ones, which are weak twos and stamen and Jacoby transfers. And other than that, you know, there's something for everybody in a class. If they are not comfortable with the bidding and they don't understand how a certain contract was reached, mm -hmm. then perhaps they, they have good card sense and they find that they'll play a hand well or defend a hand well. Uh -huh. So there are many aspects of the game. Well, let me tell you that what we have been doing for a while, and it works out very well because so many of you travel, we are offering intermediate bread, bridge in four week sessions. So you're welcome to sign up for one, two, or all three sessions. And the first one begins on September 10th. Susan is always teaching on Wednesday afternoons, always in the game room, and it's one to 3.30. Please sign up at either service desk and take a chance on bridge. Now it's time to cover all of Monday's happenings, academy news, menus, and Village Church connections right after this word from David Howenstein with a preview of his radio show on TV, Listening to the Words. This Thursday is the anniversary of the fateful 9-11, when falling towers were followed by helping hands. We'll hear a New York City cop remember a priest who was the first victim of that day's disaster. The rest of this 30-minute episode of Listening to the Words is given over to an appreciation of nature from the likening of the lickety-splitting bike lines of the Tour de France to the vivacious varieties of vines growing here at Shell Point. 
and from the inspiration of gorgeous gardens to pearls of wisdom emanating from a cat's eye view from the outdoor swimming pool. This is your reader host, David Howenstein, inviting you and yours to listen to the words all day, every day this week, and every week on Shell Point's Channel 12, and anytime online at www.shellpoint.net slash listening. Please note that Channel 12 will be busier than usual this week, especially Tuesday and Thursday. So if listening to the words is not on when you tune in Channel 12, just check back in an hour or two and it will be plain. As always, thank you for listening to the words. Hi everybody and welcome to the happening segment of Shell Point TV. I'm Bev Chandley and I'm here with Mary Franklin and we're going to tell you which activities we offer for you here today at Shell Point. We're going to start from 8 o'clock at 8 o'clock this morning. From 8 to 5 o'clock, the mobile mammography van will be at the Village Church. At 9 o'clock, the food pantry group will be at the Village Church. Also at 9 o'clock, we have the men's round robin doubles tennis at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. 9.15, always a busy time. We have billiards in the resident activity center. We also have 9.15 pottery with instruction available down in the pottery studio. And we'll move to 1015, where you'll find the Parkinson's Enrichment Group at the Social Center on the island. And at 1030, the Disciple Men's Study Group will be in the game room of the Woodlands. At 1045, we'll have table tennis with the clinic down in the Tarpon Room. And then at 1130, we have a Health Connections class, Agility and Flexibility. That will be in the Health Club. And that concludes the morning. Here's Mary for your afternoon lineup. Thank you, Bev. At 12 o'clock, we start with Mahjong being played in the Sable Room. At 1.15, you can head down to the Tarpon Room for advanced table tennis or head to the Resident Activity Center for the card game Samba. 1.45, Balance and Mobility Training Level 1 will take place in the Health Club on the island. 2 o'clock is the time for the BDI Bead Club. They will be gathering in the Oak Room at the Woodlands. 3 o'clock, Pilates Stretch will take place in the Health Club on the island. And 3.30, we'll head outdoors for a Health Connection class, Aqua Agility and Conditioning at the LifeQuest Aquatic Center. We wrap up our Monday evening with Duplicate Bridge being played at 6.30 in the game room. That wraps up our Monday activities. We look forward to seeing you right back here tomorrow. Hello everyone, I'm Terry Colath with your Academy update for Monday, the first day of the Fall Academy. At 10.15, we have an iPad e-reader class in the Manatee Room of the Island and sign up is required. At 10.30, our Appreciating Words group gets started in the Oak Room of the Woodlands and they welcome everyone. We have a new class tomorrow, the glorious history and culture of Thailand and Phuket with Professor Adrian Kerr. Menus for Monday. In the crystal room, the crystal platter is rotisserie chicken with mashed sweet potatoes and carrots. The dinner special is old home cooking night for $11.95, and the soup of the day is senate bean. In the island cafe for lunch, the special is an alpine chicken sandwich with fries for $7.25. The dinner special is grilled tilapia with rice pilaf and spinach and tomato for $8.25. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. It's a privilege to welcome you today to Village Church Connections. Thank you for joining us. I have a very special guest beside me today, Bob Southern, who is our project management leader here at Shell Point. And Bob, you and your team, Julie Nipper in particular, have been very, very helpful to us as we've been working through this renovation project at the church. And before we get into any of the details of the project, I just want to say thank you. On behalf of all of us, we have deeply appreciated the work and the time and the energy that you all have devoted to the project, and we could not have done it without you. So thank you. Well, you're quite welcome, um, and it's been a pleasure. Uh, certainly, the Village Church is a, a centerpiece of the community and who we are, and uh, it's been a, a joy to be a part of that and to work with the, the team in the church, and uh, it, it's been fun and challenging, and uh, as any big job like that is, and, and renovating uh, an existing space. So um, 
uh, we've been pushing through all those challenges and, and those interesting discoveries you make behind walls and under floors and uh, we're looking forward to seeing it done and moving everybody back in and getting uh, those uh, services up and running. We are too, and as we get closer to that October date that's been our goal, the activity level is escalating around the, the uh, church as a lot of things are going on. Give us an update as to what's currently happening and where we are in the project. Well, um, we spent a lot of time uh, in, the, in the main sanctuary area after we uh, just cleared everything out and, and removing the existing old seating and the carpeting. And then with uh, the use of lifts, tearing down all the old ceiling tiles and insulation in the ceiling so that we could get above the ceiling uh, to remove the, the old can lights that used to light the sanctuary and all the, the wiring that went back to the main electrical room to, to be prepared to install all the new um, and more modern electrical uh, light fixtures that are going to light the sanctuary. Uh, uh, LED fixtures, uh, those the can lights, there's about 150 of them through the sanctuary, light emitting diode uh, type fixtures that uh, provide a, a wonderful clean white light, uh, fully dimmable from the, the second floor control booth. Uh, so that uh, the, the, the folks working up there can control the amount of light in the sanctuary in different areas of the sanctuary. Uh, they have, all those light fixtures have now been installed along with the control packages and the wiring back to the control booth. Um, new ceiling tiles and insulation have been installed, so now the sanctuary itself, that ceiling is finished. Um, and when that was done, uh, we moved up to the second floor in the mezzanine area and tore all those ceilings out and uh, have been putting the new lighting up there and ceiling grids and into the offices and disrupting your life and all the folks that work up there. We're very good at disrupting uh, lives and workflows and doing our best not to disrupt too much, but uh, that's part of, of the, the, the process. Um, so we um, have been uh, moving forward with getting that done and are very close now to having that whole lighting package installed and uh, have been painting the sanctuary as that has wrapped up and now we're starting the carpeting. Uh, they started actually started the carpeting just today and uh, uh, we'll be installing carpeting uh, throughout the next several weeks. Uh, and. Um, uh, you're going to really start seeing the area come together now, and, and uh, it's uh, the mad scramble time toward the end, and, and uh, what I always refer to when the projects get close to the end is the, the crisis of the day time frame, when there's <laughs> seems like there's always something that pops up that looks like it's just going to stop the job and dead in its tracks. And over the course of the day, you figure out what the problem is, you solve it, and wait for the next crisis of the day to arise. Um, and uh, you know the the, the roll-up wooden doors were the crisis that we've had uh, to to deal with now, and uh, uh, we're working through the the issues with them. But uh, when you're dealing with a, an old building and and everything that goes with that, uh, there's always surprises, and uh, uh, just you, you roll with the punches, you deal with what you have to, and you keep moving forward. And you've been great problem solvers, I have to say. We are seeing things come together at this point as the paint goes on the walls and the electric gets done and the lights come on and the kitchen's been demoed, the library's been demoed, but those over the course of the next week or so are going to be put back together and that process will be started. Uh, I will mention that over the course of the next couple weeks, we'll be shuffling office spaces as the offices all get done, which will, as you mentioned, affect our workflow, but we're going to do our our best to be accessible to folks and be available to be helpful as needed. And everybody's been great about that. The staff has been great. They've worked with us if we, as we move things here and there, and they're taking the opportunity to, to clean things out and get rid of things that uh, they don't need to have around anymore and reconfigure things and, and get their workspaces uh, in better shape when they come back. And residents have been great about uh, working around what we're doing and uh, not trying to, to sneak into the work areas where it's unsafe. It's, they've been really great about that. Um, and as you say, the, the, the new kitchen area, the flooring is happening in there, and, and uh, the library has been stripped out. New shelving is going to start going in there any day now, and uh, those areas will start to come back together. And um, so there, there are um, 
rather than the big sanctuary job going on, there's lots of little pockets of work in this room and that room and this area and that area. The, the actual control booth upstairs is actually being expanded by eight feet. Uh, so we're adding more equipment and space for them to control all the things that they do up there, the cameras and the lights. and. Uh, uh, so it, it's just going to be uh, a lot of neat things that are going to be there and be in place and really looking forward to seeing uh, the church when it comes together with the new seating and the carpeting and the new paint colors and some of the new decorative light fixtures in addition to the, the new LED lighting and seeing how to, all that all works and comes together and is controlled. and. Um, We've done some nice things on the stage also with new bamboo wood flooring up there um, and acoustical panels on the back of the stage, which will augment the sound of all the uh, the, the musical of the events and singing. Very Randy's yeah, very exciting about his acoustical panels. <clears throat> they were um, um, heavy, thick panels that are made uh, specifically to uh, reflect uh, and augment sound so it bounces off the back wall in a way that's uh, beneficial to the sound. And uh, there's, um, I think, 42 of these panels and they weigh 95 pounds each. So we actually had to rebuild the rear wall of the stage so it would hold all that weight. Um, and uh, they were installed about a week ago and uh, they look great up there. So the, the, the rear curtains of the stage come right up and meet these deep panels. And when the, 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 the curtains are closed, um, it looks very nice. Um, and we've got a big, beautiful new cross that's being made that will be internally lit. So uh, when that's hung in front of these new panels and with the, the curtains, and it's just going to be gorgeous. It will be. It's been noisy, it's been messy, but it's been exciting. And we love seeing the project come together. And over the course of the next few weeks, we're just celebrating that. Our goal's been October. And I believe that we will still be able to be back in that space beginning in October. It probably won't be 100% done. We don't expect it will be, but certainly usable. That is our goal. Uh, and I, I think you're probably right. There will still be some back of uh, behind the scenes stuff going on. Uh, uh, when you've got these all these little discoveries that happen and things that pop up, you add a little time to the schedule. Uh, but we're very confident that the the sanctuary will be opened and usable, and the uh, with the carpeting starting now, and the the, the chairs will be coming soon. And uh, how many chairs? Uh, about a thousand. About a thousand, uh, a thousand fifty, I think, is the yeah. number. And, yeah. Thank you, Bob. You're quite and well. send our thanks to Julie as well. You've been a great team to work with. And thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Have a wonderful day. We're glad you joined us for today's show. Tune in tomorrow when we'll hear about technology working for you. We'll get a tech tip from Penny Modrich about updating your applications. And we'll meet with our nurse practitioner, Dr. Carol Clark and Tara Hazard, who will introduce us to the new patient portal for accessing your health information at the Shell Point Medical Center. Until then, this is Shell Point Today for Monday, September 8th. I'm Adam Brown, and for all of us here at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a great day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.